So, there's been a lot happening lately. Huey's bio finally came out, the funniest twist happened when people thought that Riot was using AI again, and the players bullied more rioters off of social media. And in the background, while all of this was happening, an entire new realm of despair spawned around balancing. When it comes to balancing champions, everyone has their own opinion on it. But under normal circumstances, you won't really see into the core of all the players. So for all of that, we have to go back to the forsaken place of League of Legends mains subreddits. With one particularly strong army coming together on the Mordekaiser subreddit. A place of chat enjoyers of a single champion who could have used some of the tools brought to you by today's sponsor. Thanks to Oprah GX for sponsoring this video. You see, if there is one thing every Mordekaiser main should get, it would be Oprah GX for a very simple reason. No matter if you are bashing your head against Aatrox or if you are forging a brand new empire, the first thing that might stop you is ping. While other browsers may bite into your valuable bandwidth, Oprah GX simply has a feature called GX Control, which limits its use of CPU, RAM and internet bandwidth. This enhances the performance of your computer even while you have the 50 tabs open on your other monitor as you're frantically trying to find a guide on how to play against your lane opponent. And trust me, you're Mordekaiser you're gonna need it. And in the worst case scenario, you can always just uh, watch videos and listen to music without worrying about lag. But if you think your beefy machine won't tell the difference, your eyes will. Who would want to stare at the puny designs of mortals when you can customize Oprah GX to match the empire of the Iron Revenant? By using GX mods found in GX Store, you can customize anything from the base wallpaper to the sounds your keyboard makes to giving your browser its own music theme, to the sound of opening and closing tabs, to the overarching color themes, and all while giving you the ability to individually disable or enable all of those modifications separately. And do you know what's the best thing about all of this? Besides choosing one of the many mods that were already added in, you can also simply make your own. But that's still not it. Taking the role of one unified gaming hub, Oprah GX can also stick your Discord and your Messenger apps to the sidebar, so you can easily keep an eye on them. Not to mention that you can also connect your Twitch account with it and get direct notifications whenever your favorite streamer goes live. That's, uh, that, that's me, right? That's all inside a single web browser, Oprah GX. So use my link below to download Oprah GX today and get ready to shape it like Mordekaiser shaped the souls into his brand new empire. Again, thanks to Oprah GX for sponsoring this video. But now, back to Mordekaiser shenanigans. So imagine things are not exactly going the right direction for your champion. Imagine playing your champion no longer feels fun. Do you A. accept the fact that things change, balance is volatile or perhaps you grew out of the elo where your favorite champion is optimal, therefore you might have to try someone else, or B. do you try to change the champion yourself? Trick question, nobody ever does A. And instead people rely on the good old pitchforks. The thing is, throughout the last few months, League didn't have the best reputation for exactly being balanced. Yes, it is true that League of Legends has always had these kinds of complaints, but recently they were especially not great. And it got so bad that some of the champions who have not been having a great time for a while now, started boycotting their champions. Now, how can you boycott a champion you might ask? Well, you stop playing them. That will show Riot. To be fair, the goal is noble. The players just want to show Riot that their champion is not great. But I'm not sure if this solves anything. Is what I would say if a twist wasn't on the horizon. You see, the entire time I've been talking about multiple champions. That's right, it's not just Mordekaiser mains who boycotted their own champion. So I would like to play a game. There are actually four champions who simultaneously boycotted their own champion. Of course, in reality, there was probably a lot more, but these four stood out. 
And my question is, which one of these started all of this? Was it Valgaz, Mordekaiser, Shen, or Zed? You got your answer locked in? Alright, that's right, it was Seraphine. Now to be fair, Seraphine is kinda separate from everyone else given the circumstances, but she was one of the first ones to go big and also get some results. Partially it could be because in the past Seraphine mains have always done similar things and they have always gotten some results, but in this case it absolutely makes sense why it happened. I mean, when your support mage starts getting really good numbers as an AD carry, you know something is wrong. But that's not really where the issue came from. Seraphine's problem was that she was a really good support, but she wasn't a great mid lane mage, which was always supposed to be her secondary role. In fact, the gap between these two roles was so big that when, for example, they tried to buff her mid lane, her support version would spiral out of control. And should they nerf support, her mid lane would be unplayable. Which is why Riot had to give her some drastic changes to bring those two versions closer together. That way she would be a lot less problematic to balance. The thing is, the Seraphine mains didn't really like the changes and so they got mad and vocal. Again, some of the Seraphine mains, not all of them, heavily leaned into this because similar things worked in the past. So they tried it again. And just like it worked with the complaints about skins, in one of the latest patches, Seraphine got to see more changes. Now I'm not saying that the changes were good or that Seraphine players are happy, she still seems to be all over the place. But the point is, being vocal seemed to give them results. So while their little rebellion didn't achieve their original goals, it seemed to prove that players have the power to do something. Which is something you'll see relates to everything else in this video. Anyway, overall, the Seraphine situation was a bit of an isolated case, because of how drastic her changes were. So instead, the real boycott started somewhere else. And by now, many of you may know that it actually started around Shen. He is also one of the champions who slowly started getting outclassed by everyone else, only being held up by the sheer utility of his ultimate. I'm not really one to go over all the details and over everything that was wrong with him, but thankfully there is another person with the experience and knowledge to do so. A person who made an entire video talking about everything regarding Shen who also, unfortunately, kickstarted a whole new wave of boycotts. And of course, I am talking about Expetu. I am probably gonna mispronounce your name, I'm sorry. The overly simplified premise was simple. Shen was not a great champion who didn't feel that great to play. Which is an issue because at least when you have a champion that's fun, even if they are bad, you are getting something out of it. But in Shen's case, many people thought it felt like you're just being handicapped. What's worse, in the past, Riot brought in some changes that just indirectly destroyed some of the more powerful playstyles. And suddenly, Shen was a mess. Again, I am heavily oversimplifying just to relay the news. The point is, in his video, Expetu brought up all the issues. With the final message of the video being that even though the Shen mains have always tried to adapt to the meta, and some even played him in questionable roles simply because he was better there, they all kept playing him because he was fun. But in his current state, he was just not good. So there was a call for a boycott. It was to stop playing Shen until Riot turned him into a fun champion again. And the thing is, it worked, at least to some degree. The Shen mains stopped playing him for a month and they got some results after that month. It seemed like the community was mostly behind Expetu, because even that video alone got to 400,000 views. And pro players as well as some Riot designers started talking about Shen. And eventually they even got an official reply from Riot. So changes were brought in, which would push around the power scaling and give Shen a better place in the meta. 
Now, at this point, the changes weren't massive. It was just tiny changes, but it was something at the end of the day. Though I'm not gonna go over the specifics because that's not really the point of this video. The point is that seemingly the boycotts yet again worked in a similar way to Seraphine. And as it always happens, this started a bit of a chain reaction. And so, because Expetu perhaps single-handedly brought up issues that saved an entire champion, others were inspired. And so others called for boycotts too. Do you remember how in one of my previous videos I mentioned that somehow, for some reason, there is a phenomenon happening around League's main subreddits, where the mains often unintentionally mimic the lore of their own champion, like how Warwick mains showed their d*** to Singed? Well, yet again, after witnessing Shen's victory, the Zed mains rose in their wake, and they tried to bring up their own revolution in the way Zed would. So miserable. I'm so fucking miserable, man. Champ is trash, does zero damage, gets shoved out, can't last it with Q anymore under tower because of the nerfs. W cooldown is too long, so I can't skip easily anymore. All keystones nerfed. Almost every matchup is pain. AD carries kill me in two shots. Mage is perma shot me out of lane and then build stopwatch. Deathblade sucks. Eclipse sucks. Ghostblade sucks. Force to build Hydra. Force to play to late game. Lose late game anyway because everyone has at least 3k HP. And Zonia stopwatch armor. Truly the saddest timeline, and this is the game Freak wants us to play. Yeah, that last line aged like fine wine. Needless to say, their revolution didn't work. But the same day, they tried again. We must revolt. We need to do something about these buffs. We can at least try to convince the majority of the League community that Zed deserves buffs. But I had this plan to use AI to generate a well-deserved essay. But I need points for that essay and so on and so on. I am requesting all Zed mains, challenger to low elo, to come together and bring together points that would convince the community that Zed should be buffed. Okay, I don't think that was the best thing they could have tried. So next, instead, the Zed mains marched into the Shen mains subreddit and they asked for help. Hello, Shen mains. Lots of love from your brother's Zed mains community. We are impressed by our complete collaboration and efforts to make Riot hear your voices and notice Shen. Long story short, there was nothing Shen mains could really do. I mean, at that point, the changes Shen got were extremely tiny. And nothing really happened after that. So Zed was ironically left in the shadows. Seemingly totally ignored by Riot. And so Zed mains joined Shen mains. And together, as the comrades in lore they once were, they marched into a third subreddit. The third champion who was also left in the dirt. Champion who also went through its own boycott. Velkos. Dear Velkos, Shen and Zed mains to Velkos mains. Hello Velkos mains, we are disturbed by how Riot has been treating our champs. And the ignorance now almost feels intentional. We are happy about the buffs you got, but we know about the issues and the 16-day boycott you had collaborated on in order to get Riot's attention. That's right, you see, for a very long time, Valkos has not been in a great spot either. And that's mostly because, despite how cool his kit may be, it is all very simple. And his skill ceiling is surprisingly quite low. That's outside of poking people with his Q. Which means that the higher you get with Belkos, the less you can do with him. Even though he is supposed to be a complex champion. Now in this case, none of this is my opinion, I'm just reading what Velkos mains wrote on the reddit. And so, with these issues brought up, just like what happened to Shen, Velkos also got his own champion that would push for attention. And here it would be Azep, a quadruple challenger Velkos player who simply wanted to give Velkos a bit more complexity for his scaling. Again, I am heavily oversimplifying. His original post actually has a lot of amazing feedback. Anyway, the point is that the boycott was officially started. And a while later, the boycott worked. Again, 
But this time it was because the boycott got to League's main subreddit where it started doing some damage. Here I would like to bring up some quotes. What Velko's mains have done is provide a lot of civil and detailed feedback. Now here's the issue. It's not even that the suggestions are bad. It's that Freak, in his video, pretends no one has ever given suggestions. And that players just say that Velko sucks. Even the most biased people here can see, from the post, that this is just untrue. This is complete disrespect by Freak against his players. Oh, that wine just keeps aging so well. Anyway, this started a bit of fear in the entire League of Legends community. Because now it seemed like all you had to do was to be an annoying community and the one with the loudest voice would get Riot's attention. Even though in the case of Shen and Velkos, that wasn't the case. Both communities were constructive. But that didn't stop an entire separate community to rise on their own. You might have wondered, why isn't he talking about Mordekaiser? Well, that's because, just like in his lore, a lot of his complaints predate the other boycotts. And after Shen's uprising, it was Mordekaiser who rose next, with a lot of memes and a lot of complaints. Though, to be honest, a lot of these were constructive feedback too. But unlike Zed, Shen and Velkos, who bonded together and had their own cross posts, Mordekaiser was left alone, in his own realm, his hatred forged with his own iron. I have decided to put down Nightfall and hang up the armor. I just can't play Mord anymore, at least not until he is fixed. More posts just like these followed. It's about time we do something. Enough is enough, Riot. Gentlemen, we had enough neglection from Riot. And it's about time we do something. If they won't do anything the next patch, or the patch after it, we shall take matters into our own hands. Are we really going through with the moored boycotts? Just making sure if the majority of us are going through with it or not. Um, it didn't work with Shen, and arguably the most popular Shen player is the one who called for it. But then, a stranger approached Mordekaiser's realm. It was his rival who could annihilate his lane any day. Aatrox. The issue with Mordekaiser and how to fix them from Aatrox's main's eyes. Which was also followed by others, such as Swain mains also chipping in. And slowly it seemed like Mordekaiser was getting more and more attention. And then finally! It was all kinda pointless because Riot was trying to fix everything regardless. And so when Riot announced the season 2024 update, Mordekaiser mains rejoiced because their savior lied among the item reworks. He would be able to enjoy items that scaled with his kit. But that's not where the fixing stopped. Because within the same update, Lethality got reworked too. And so, even though they also thought they were being ignored, Zed would no longer be countered by percentages. So the Zed mains rejoiced too. And with all the new scaling, Shen could use some new tools too. Now, we didn't talk about Velkos because Riot also accidentally just broke all mages. But the point is, Riot was trying to fix everything, but it was just supposed to be part of one bigger update. I mean, why would they try to heavily alter some of the champions before this update, if they knew that all the new items would just screw everything up anyway? But unfortunately, most people didn't realize this. Most people didn't realize that Riot wasn't ignoring them. That they just wanted to wait because they had a bigger fix in the works. Yes, it still sucks that Riot didn't say anything, but in the end, so far, it all seems to have worked out. And so, what all of this has left behind was a simple belief. People believe that the boycotts worked, even though that's not really the case. The reason why Riot changed the Velkos was because his changes were a bit more complex. It's because the players complained about specific issues, which Riot knew couldn't be fixed with simple items. And for example, for Zed, that wasn't the case. They already had a pre-planned fix using the items, so changing Zed out of nowhere wouldn't help. And as for Mordekaiser, 
I'm just happy they are theorizing around items again. Also, it's funny to see the Mordekaiser debates after the 2024 changes were announced. Boycotting Mordekaiser was a stupid idea. 